I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, decision trees. Sorry about that. Decision trees are basically um, a set of decisions that, based on you know asking uh, subsequent questions, we can answer a problem. So, for example, will I play tennis? Well, first I'm going to look at the outlook. If the outlook is sunny, then I'm going to look at the humidity because I can play in sunny weather, but I don't like very humid, if very humid uh, weather. So I look at the outlook. If it's sunny, then I look at the humidity. If the humidity is high, I won't play tennis. If the humidity is normal, I will play tennis. In the same way, if the outlook is overcast, I know that I always play tennis in my city. And if the outlook is rainy, then I'm going to look at the wind. If the wind is very weak, then I will play tennis. I can stand a little rain. If the wind is very strong, I won't play tennis. This is a decision tree. It looks like an inverted tree, you see, like the branches, it's branching out downwards, all right? Now, <clears throat> this decision tree, if you know programming or logic, it can be expressed, expressed like this. The hypothesis that I will play tennis is yes. So the hypothesis that I will actually play tennis, okay, it's given by the solution to this statement. In other words, the hypothesis that I will play tennis is yes, if and only if the outlook is sunny and the humidity is normal, or if the outlook is overcast, or if the outlook is rainy and the wind is weak. All of these conditions will make me play tennis. My hypothesis will be no if any other conditions happen. Okay, This can be represented with an if statement in a programming language or this is represented in logic. But it's the same as this tree over here. They say the same thing. For example, if the outlook is sunny and the humidity is normal, then I will play tennis. Well, here it says that I play tennis if the outlook is sunny and the humidity is normal. Right? These are OR clauses, so if any of these is true, then I will play tennis. All right, so <clears throat> the applications for decision trees are many. Anything that is rule-based decision, where you have an attribute and a value in pairs. So for example, outlook, sunny, outlook, overcast. Those are attribute, outlook, and value, sunny, value, overcast, and so on and so forth. So anything that has attribute value pairs and it's rule-based decision can be represented as a tree. Sometimes equipment diagnostics are represented by decision trees. So if you can feed the printer and the paper doesn't roll, then it's wrong. If the you can feed the printer, and the ink is there, and the paper is there, and it's plugged, and and so on and so forth. Now, credit risk sometimes is uh, done by decision trees, and sometimes scheduling is also done by decision trees. Now, some of the limitations uh, for decision trees is exactly that the instances are represented by attribute value pairs. I mean, what happens if I want to if I want to invest money and I want to know the quantity of money, not whether I should invest or not? but actually the actual quantity, which is a continuous value. Which brings us to the next, um, to the next uh, function here. The target function has discrete output values. So it's not just, it's, it's only yes, no, A, B, C, D, E, whatever like that, but not a number. So if the instance that are represented by attribute value pairs, right, or the, the target function has discrete output values, those are things that are good for decision trees, but are also limitations. Um, we can look at disjunctive descriptions might be required for some very uh, for some complicated queries. Now the other thing is the training data might contain errors and the training data might contain missing attributes. So for example, what if I know that the outlook is sunny but I don't know what the humidity is going to like is going to look like, right? That's a missing value. I don't know what to do, right? That's a limitation of the decision tree. You need to have all of all of the values there, right? And what if I have a training example where I built this from, right? Where the outlook was sunny, the humidity was high, and yet I still played. What, what happened with that contradiction? Those are all limitations for decision trees. Now, in the next video, we're going to see how to figure out how to build a decision tree.